So one of the things that I really believe in is that it is a powerful tool for self-development. I do believe that traveling by yourself is empowering you, even if you think that you might not be able to do it when you start. I didn't think I was able to do it. So one of the things that you find is that you increase your autonomy. You increase your autonomy because you have to make those decisions. And you have to, to, to choose. You cannot say that, oh, maybe I'll just follow that person. Um, you're actually making that decision if you follow that person. That's actually quite cool. But, um, you are making that decision. And what is it to make decisions by yourself and to choose and research yourself? This is self-development. Another thing that I hear a lot, and I actually enjoy a lot, is um, it's, it's more risky to travel alone. And that's true. I hitchhike a lot by myself. I know that um, a woman traveling alone has 10 times more chances of having a problem than if she would be traveling with someone else. That, that's for sure. So there's more risk, but there's not only for, for women. That would be the same for, for guys. There's more risk of, of being stranded somewhere and not having resources. When you're two people, you can share the resources. But being confronted with that risk means also that you have to, to assess that risk. And so um, you have sometimes to find out what is your comfort zone. So how much risk am I ready to take? How much space am I willing to go further than? So I wanted to introduce this concept because it's really important for me. I actually, some of my background in my past life I studied in school. Um, I was doing some risk assessment for um, emergency uh, plan, so how to evacuate people from buildings. And so we're trying to find out, so what's the risk of a spill, of a terrorist attack in this really remote village where I was living. Um, and so we, we tried to think of all the possibilities of things that can happen. And I believe that as an individual, to carry that kind of analysis can make sure that you're getting better at, at traveling, at living, at doing things. If you start from a point, you're in your comfort zone. Your comfort zone is not only what you can do. What you can do is the bigger circle here. Your comfort zone is what you do every day, is what you're, you can do without thinking even. But the current skills are the things that you know you're able to do. You're not necessarily willing to do it very often, but if for a trip you want to do it, you do it. What is interesting is that whenever you wish, you can just go, you aim higher, and you try to extend your current skills. And as you extend your current skills, you extend also your comfort zone. The first time I hitchhiked alone, I was really stressed. <laughs> and that's pretty normal. But then, as I did it in Sweden, where a lot of women picked me up, eventually I did it in Ireland, when only men picked me up, and when I had my first offer for sex. And um, I think at that moment, I expanded a lot of my comfort zone. And I think it's interesting for everybody to think about that. If you are too afraid to do something, what exactly is your comfort zone and where you could go safely to expand, where you can take this, this risk, this additional risk. And so, of course, this is self-development. In your life, in everyday life, whenever you will want to do something, you will be able to calculate more that risk and you will know that you have more resources because you've tried it. Another thing, when you're traveling alone, is that you're meeting new people, more people than if you would be traveling with a friend or as a couple. That's one thing for sure. Uh, I'm also on couch surfing, I host people. When I have a couple, I interact less with them. That's, that's for sure. If there's one person alone, you're in a country where you don't speak the language, you have to find ways to communicate. You meet new people, you make connections, um, deeper connections with local people instead of just surfing the culture really briefly. You have to understand how it works. Um, you step out of your comfort zone, and that's self-development. Um, <laughs> I insist on that point. <laughs> so another thing um, that traveling alone brings, I think, is flexibility. So your plans are changing. You are able to make the choice of changing um, your direction, of following somebody else that you just met somewhere, be it in the hostel, be it uh, on the road directly while hitchhiking. You can decide that you're going north instead of going south and nobody's really bothering you. And same thing, you don't have to ask your partner if you have to, to, if they want to do something or not, and that flexibility is really worth it and learns you some responsibility as well. So increased responsibility, what does that lead to? <laughs> 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 
self-development. Now you know that whenever you're making a choice, you are fully responsible for it. You're very hungry because you did not bring enough food or you did not find any. That's your fault, my dear. <laughs> or if you're facing a really cool situation, that's also your fault. You're responsible for it. And that's pretty cool to know it when it happens to you. And also, um, the last but not least, I would like to quote my friend Chris here. Um, one stupid person is easier to cope with than two. So that was his answer when I said, do you want to go hitchhiking uh, with me or do you want to go alone? And <laughs> it's actually quite true because one stupid person, that's, that's, that's me, for me actually. <laughs> and the interesting thing is that, yes, sometimes I'm pretty stupid. I can, I can argue, I have my, my little things. Uh, last time I hitchhiked with a guy, I, it really was a pain in the ass, and I know it. Because I was wondering, well, I'm too shy, I don't ask people normally, I tend to just stand by the side of the road, and sometimes I go ask people when I speak the language, or sometimes not, it depends if it rains, you know, and then you're wondering, is the person going to accept that I'm really anal about all of this, or is it, is it okay? So when I'm alone, I'm making this dialogue in myself, and just to cope with myself and to learn to deal with all these questions, that's certainly self-development. So I asked the question around me, especially in the women's group and my network, so what do you find the hardest when you're traveling as, alone as a woman? I didn't want to present you just my experience because, as I said, it's, it's limited to my type of traveling. So I asked a lot of women, so now that you have traveled alone, what do you think? What do you find is, is more difficult? So no surprises on this one, sexual harassment came first, groping, flashing, anything sexual. I decided also to include some quotes so that you can see exactly the words that they were saying. So seriously, I would say sexual harassment, always and always. Seriously, I hate boys, men for that. It goes that far. Okay, so next, another really important hardship would be loneliness. And that I find quite interesting because I asked the same question in the hitchhikers group, um, in which I'm really involved too. And people said, well, I feel alone when I'm waiting for a ride, but that's the only moment where they feel alone, almost. When they're finished with an adventure and they would like to share it with someone and say, oh, that was really cool, wasn't it? But then that's not something that, that people, that women realize that it, it could be a, a problem. The, the problem for women was I'm alone in restaurants. I go, I go eat somewhere and I'm alone, and that's really depressing. Or at night when they want to go out, they don't know anyone. And even, even when they are couch surfing, if your host is not into what you would like to do uh, at night, you maybe won't go out because you don't know which area is safe or you're not comfortable coming back. And there's also, um, just come back, please. Don't know how to meet people, which I find pretty interesting and I put in red because I believe this is something that can be learned. This is the reason why hitchhikers do not feel that loneliness the same way is that they know how to get to people and start speaking to them. There's some women that said, well, you know, I think for, for men, it's easier to just walk in a cafe and start talking to people. And I'm not sure why this would be gender related. Sometimes I'm walking and then I find women on my way, I just start speaking to them. So it might be more something that one can learn. So a quote, what I always find the hardest is to lack company. Or seeing something mind blowing and no one to share it with or to say, well, look at that. That's, that's very common. Uh, intercultural issues, I won't even develop that one because I'm sure that you can feel exactly what I mean. A lot of times you, you feel that something is wrong, you know that it's not necessarily other people's fault. You knew in advance that women are not treated the same way in that country or that some signals are not the same, that flirting is not the same at all, but still it happens, it annoys you. So that's that's stronger. And I believe that these things are also some things that people can learn to avoid as, uh, as they gain experience. Sexual harassment at home looks different than in other countries. Most people said, I realize when, when I go in, in another country that some things bug me way more than my friends. I'm, I'm with my host and I notice everything and they don't notice the sexual harassment or the, the things, the incidents that, th they don't notice what I notice. So it's ma mainly about cultural issues here. Uh, being in an unfamiliar environment is much easier when you're two people. You can try to cope with together, um, but that's something that a, a person alone might find really oppressing. Uh, not knowing who to trust and not knowing 
who to ask for help. And I wrote that one in red again because I believe this is something that one can learn, especially not knowing who, um, not knowing to ask for help. So I think these two are closely related, actually. That if you're not used to asking for help in your life in general, you will not tend to trust people enough to be able to find who to ask for help. So learning to ask for help is critical. Um, planning. Most women that did not travel much are saying the problem is when I'm planning, I worry too much. I worry too much because people ask me, but why are you going there? Is it dangerous? Aren't you scared? And from the moment that I disconnect from them, I feel better. So that's why worrying is in red. Um, change. There are some countries I'd like to visit, but I don't dare to alone because I am a woman. <laughs> Reality. Um, <laughs> deciding what to wear. We're women, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, the reason why I put it so big and without any, any quotation here is um, it's actually quite true that one of the symbols in, in cultural differences, one of the first symbol of differences between men and women is the clothing that is appropriate or not in a country. And so deciding what to wear is not only, is not only about being feminine and being yourself and keeping your style and being functional. It can mean also safety aspect and we all know it. We are aware of it. We just don't know what is the limit that we can do. And that can be very stressful. Uh, awareness. I can't go to the toilet without leaving my backpack and I just have my backpack, nobody to check it. So that's an example. But awareness in general, when you're two, two people, somebody's checking out while you're doing some, something else so you feel safer. Um, taking care of oneself. In the hitchhikers group, I have not seen any comments about that. <laughs> but that's basically hygiene and <laughs> looking pretty and taking care of, of shaving and will I find all the stuff that I will feel comfortable in every day and feel that I don't stink, that kind of stuff. I wonder why hitchhikers don't care much about that. But <laughs> um, Feeling foreigner and being identified as such, it's even worse for the second part actually. Feeling foreigner is you, you, you do feel that you don't fit in. It's pretty clear. Now, if your skin is really pale and you're blonde in the middle of Africa, I mean, it's not about feeling it, it's it. <laughs> Next one. Okay, so uh, the question that now I'd like to raise is how? Now you know why you should do it and you know what is difficult. So I'd like to propose some, um, some techniques.